Uh, one thing I wrote down, this is something that I feel uh, is very uh, close to our, uh, what's the word? It's important to us. Like, I'm trying to say it nicely, fuck kind of thing. Um, is ageism in hip hop. I really feel like it's a problem. It started for me when I heard Havoc from Mob Deep, who I'm obviously a huge fan of. He said, if you haven't had your first hit by age 30, quit. And that quote disgusts me to my core. Um, I really feel like, yes, I know hip hop is a young man's game or young human's game, but that yeah. type of attitude is really whack. Uh, not everyone is hits their potential, um, you know, in their 20s, for example, or teens or whatever the fuck, you know. And, and to me, I'm always like, why is everything so surrounded by what an 18-year-old or a 22-year-old thinks? They haven't done shit. They haven't traveled. They haven't achieved anything, really. Like, why is everything so focused around that? So the question here is, like, uh, while, yes, hip-hop is a young man's game, there's a whole new generation of grown rappers, kind of a segue. We were just talking about uh, YBN. Uh, sorry, Corday. We'll talk about uh, Coda, the friend, as well, who are doing this type of stuff. Um, you know, and even, like, the grown rappers is still killing it. Fonte, Pusha T., um, you know, you could argue Meek Mill is in that world because he's probably going to be mid thirties by now. Um, someone like mm -hmm. uh, Two Chains didn't get successful until he was thirty six. Um, fucking uh, who else was there? there was someone else and he had to reinvent himself too to change his name and to do all this stuff. So the question is: Are older MCs, specifically in rap, because I don't think it applies as much in other genres, are older MCs valuable? Do they have a place? Like where where are the the older artists place in in hip hop? In music, but specifically in hip-hop. Do you have any thoughts? I think it's great. Like, so, yeah, for example, like, Jay-Z's playing that sort of, like, more mature sort of role now, like, with 444. Yeah. Uh, he's got lots more. Um, it's, it's the, the the narrative of the album is, is talking more, like, generational wealth and, you know, looking after the family and shit like that. He's got different perspectives and how to, like, uh, you know, talk about ownership and blah, blah, blah. So um, that's one a triple OG that's still like he's like teaching the he's trying to just like plant the seeds. I read something that um well I saw a quick snippet that uh Tupac said it um and Kendrick said it like they the two people that the two like audiences that they're making music for are people in jail and like little kids because they're trying to like plant seeds. So like if you listen to like Pimper Butterfly and all the other uh, Kendrick's like for the most part, you know Good Kid, Mad City, he's telling like hood stories and all that sort of stuff and telling like a pretty like movie cinematic style and side to that part. But then in like Pimp a Butterfly, he's just talking about how to get your fucking head right and then the you know, universe works mentally and no, like, you know, he goes on all that sort of stuff. So that is like, he's still kind of dropping gems. And like, I heard Tupac say the same thing. Um, <clears throat> and I think Royce posted it uh, on his Instagram. So I think that's like that kind of shit's really important that even though Kendrick's not that old, he's kind of like going with that sort of mentality and he's planting seeds for the younger generations to not be shit because um, previously other generations are built by, you know, their neighborhoods or whatever to be shit and not to get so far unless they're, you know, suppressed and all that sort of stuff. Right. Oppressed. So, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, so artists like that are definitely making a huge, um, I don't know, impact. I think it's great to have those guys around. So, yeah. So Jay and Kendrick and that are uh, bringing it forward, mate. Okay, word. So Tiff is saying here she's mostly only enjoyed rappers at an older age uh, due to their experience. So I fuck with that. Now, on your point, someone like Jay-Z, Jay was 26 when he dropped Reasonable Doubt. Yes, he was dropping other music before then, but his first album, The Hit, was, was 26, which is quite old considering. Nas was like 20 when he dropped mm. Illmatic. So they were still young-ish in that sense. Uh, Jay Electronica, I think, was late 30s when he first did um, uh, fucking yeah. Exhibit C and all that Exhibit. stuff. And then now yeah. he's got to be like late 40s. He has to be like to be doing this stuff. So yeah. he's a dude who gets a pass. I just find that like I just so whilst so basically your point was that there are rappers who are now in their 30s and potentially in their 40s who have been around for a while but are dropping gems for the kids so that they're actually putting they're taking responsibility in their music and they're putting and the, uh, a and message the experience and they're sharing it okay and they're, and they're paying it to so, the experience forward kind of thing that's the angle right there, so that's i think one side of it and i think that's a really good point because that's basically yep. answering the question the our rappers who have maybe been around for a while are they still valuable now that's still, the answer to that yeah. so yes that, yeah to kendrick yes to cole you could say as well because cole's going to be mid mid 30s um 
yes to like Scarface, Pusha T, Royce of Fire Nine, like you said, even Crooked, Eminem. I guess you could argue for that True. too, to a yeah. degree. But he's not really saying a lot. But still, um, Jay for sure, because mm. Tiff hated Jay for the longest time, and now she understands him because now she relates to that. Uh, she likes probably she always liked Pusha, but I think she likes him more now because she's seeing the grown grown man. I did not hate. Sorry, Tiff, I'm putting in words. She wasn't the largest fan of Jay Z. She did not hate Jay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm putting I'm putting words into her mouth. It's like I, you know she she actually cares now. Here we go. Uh, Grim Jow was saying I like rappers that are older and current. Depends on what they say in their songs and the beat too. Beat definitely draws you in at first. Okay, so that's interesting. So a question for people: If anyone wants to comment, like like I'm I'm I guess because this is extra personal for us. We are in our thirties. We have not made it in any shape or form, right? In music, but we're continuing to try. Because I believe that we have a message. I believe that the music that we're making right now is better than it's ever been. And to me, if someone's trying to say that I can't rap now because I'm too old and no one cares, I think like that's ridiculous. Like it really is. I feel like why is my artistic and what not just me? I can only speak from my experience, and I imagine I'm speaking for you. But why is our artistic integrity and value reduced because we're not 22? But we've now traveled the why world. Why does it only happen in hip hop as well? And why is it only fucking happening in hip hop? It doesn't happen in any other arts. You could be 70 and start painting and you're fine. You're not going to be able to do that in rap. You're not going to be able Keith to. Keith Richards is still fucking going, man. Right? You know? Now, to be fair, here's Rochelle. Rochelle says, there's always room for variance in age. If if there isn't, it's monotonous. So that's really. And at the first time. That's yeah, that, that's a good point, too. Yeah. And also, at not just. Time, like, hip hop has never been this old before. Motherfuckers that's true. I've never seen a 40 year old, 50 year old rapper. It's like, what does that look like? That's and it. We're just kind of figuring it out. People are kind of just, you know, just it, it's still evolving. So fucking relax, like, you know. I wonder if that's like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I think that's a really fucking good point because what, because hip hop is so young as a genre, and as a culture, like four, like, uh, it's, like it's about 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40 50. Sure. It's, it's in the seventies. So what's that? It's, yeah, not fifty. You're right. It's like forty exactly. So because hip hop hasn't seen it. It's only been young people doing it because it's like the next generation, like you, people get in their thirties, and then the next bunch of hot twenty-one year olds come out or whatever the fuck. So there's never really been They're many, and only a few and of them. Everybody that's have, come out has a has a new problem with the with the previous, uh, you know. What is that too? I feel like you could. Pro- <laughs> I wonder if I had other Side genres. Step, sorry. Yeah, no, that's that that's also fair as well. But I wonder if the because it's so young, people aren't used to having older statesmen and women who are. The, you know, the, and we don't have that many of them. But at the same token, that's just still one side of it. I still feel that, what like, Jay Electronica though was already somebody in that world. So he, uh, you know, he, he I don't know. I was gonna say get the pass. I don't know. That's it. But he, you know, he had songs yeah. produced by Just Blaze in his late thirties, and he decided to fuck off and not do an album for ten years, and then did an album, and it was yeah. yeah. But like, I just, I just wonder if there's still room for that. If people are still interested in it, if people want to hear, because I guess it's like obviously the music we're making. If me and you, we would look like dicks if we were trying to make uh, club music for twenty-year-olds um, right now. I just think that would be inauthentic to us, and we would never really do it. We can do slappers and shit, but I don't think we would ever make club music. And talk, we would only talk about things that we relate to. So we are making grown man rap for grown human beings, uh, you know. And I feel like as well though. I have a video, like our friend Ryan, Ryan Gallon, he sends me videos of his kids dancing around to, to my shit. Someone told me the other day that their kid oh, asked. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Someone told me the other day their kid asked yeah. to put my music on. Forgot who it was. But like that happens a bunch to us that the kids seem to fuck with it. So like, I, I don't move, know. Movement famous for the children, okay? Move, to your mouth. Children. I always, yeah, I think All I right. let the Havoc thing get in my head a lot. Um, Grim is saying you've made it when the group of people you met in that, you met and that enjoy your music. You guys can definitely rap way better than I can. What well, I guess it's about rapping well to a degree, but it's also about like is the music on point? Like my next album, I, is the best music I've ever made by far, and it has songs on it that I think could actually make some genuine noise. Which is why I've waited so long to put it out. Now we have all of the things that we need to do it. So we're going full steam ahead. You've already started mixing. I've got my dude working on that cover. I've been talking to people about, I've been trying to work on additional funding. I'm trying to work on the the video treatments and shit. So that's good to go. But I'm always in the back of my mind. Like, I don't, we're lucky. We don't look like mad old and shit. So it's okay, except for this 
fucking gray nonsense but like that aside so it's character mate character. yeah i just i was just always concerned about it and i feel like though one thing that's made me more po- positive about it is that tiff is someone who's you know in her very early 30s and she's like barely and she's uh always you know she fucks with hip-hop but you know she wouldn't go out of her way to put rap on more than anything else and then she's been listening to that type of stuff more and more and like like i said really understanding jay-z now um in a way that she didn't before and i'm like all right that's a good sign and she when i put on fonte i put on right she's like ah yeah she, she gets it she fucks with on black thought or someone like that someone who has bars so like i really feel like there's um, bars. i think there's room for it so i just hope that people think there's room for it yeah you know i mean i love it does that ever bother you or doesn't bother you i mean but do you even think about it or it's not even like a thing i just noticed like you know the like with the example with uh, Royce, um, he always everything's got more mature and he's gotten he's got more woke as he's got more sober and stuff like that. And just like his his maturity has come through and he's kind of like enlightenment to an extent has come through in his raps lately in his freestyles like the LA Leakers joint it's all that crazy. sort of stuff. Like he's really like it's insane. So like I it's very much cool. I love seeing like him specifically as he's a very good example. He's evolved beautifully and he's yeah getting you know, more goat status as he goes along. Um, so that's, yeah. That's all about, you can, that's he did well. That to me as far as huh. the maturity, yeah. I like that. He like, so he ate, he's one of the rappers that ate. I guess all the dudes who are doing well now, uh, and the, I should keep saying dudes, it's just all the people who are doing well are, just happen to age well and gracefully and their skills got better. And like, Cocaine off Royce's last album is I think his best song he's ever done. Like, by far and i'm like you know the dude's been putting music out for 20 years but his last album was the one that had the fucking the the most the deepest joint like the book orion album that was super personal and that song is incredible um so like yeah it is good tiff is saying i think good music will always find listeners artists will always find their tribe i don't consider or care how old anyone is so i think that's a good that's a good point um and now she's saying sorry there's more but generally, older artists have more real things to say that I think will resonate with the right audience for them. And I think that's really what it is. Like you said, you got to find your tribe. This is probably more just for other artists who are maybe in their, in, you know, a little old. Maybe they're in their twenties and they feel old or something. But like, you know, maybe people who who are listening, I would imagine we probably have a bunch of other artists listening to this, um, might be concerned as well. So I guess you just got to keep fucking going, and you'll find, like you said, I think that's dope. And we'll probably talk about different different things to do as you know, like ways that artists and things that we're trying to do aside from we talked about it early on doing this podcast not yeah. one because i just want to talk about hip-hop which is great but also this, the side effect of that is hopefully more people discover it and the type of people who would enjoy this podcast are the type of people who would probably enjoy our music because if you're mm. listening to something like this you, you know maybe there's less chance you will want to hear like auto-tune like trap type of stuff which at the same time i'm talking I'm, about yeah, yeah. pills and just jumping on gugs and yeah, that's and really that. more what it is. It's not even about the sound of it because I actually fuck with that sound a lot. So it's more like it's the, Some of the, the subject matter. Fire. Yeah, it's just the subject subject fire. matter. There you go. You can. Topics you can, horrible. Yeah, I always enjoyed one of my first times Thank ever. You. I like hearing that there is room for ignorant music. I feel like you know everyone. You don't want to hear like a sermon when you're it's in the club. A saturation. Yeah. yeah. That's the point. So many variation, variations of the same fucking tunes. Like you know, how many times are you gonna get smashed at the club and then talk about it? Yeah, that's Do you why know, I like the crunk. The crunk music was so short. The, crunk the music, time uh, for the time. Was, yeah, it was. That's a good point. Yeah, it was only popping for a couple of years. Yeah, I saw um someone say that's a really good point that you said that because someone said that I forgot who it was. They go, if you're putting if your new songs are club music right now, you're tone deaf. You're not reading the room. Like there ain't no fucking clubs, bro. So what the fuck are you releasing club music? Like. And no one's even really driving around that much to be able, you know, because when do you enjoy that type of music? When you're in the club or where it's really loud in the car, you're not really bumping those club songs. So true. By yeah. yourself at home. It's it's supposed to be with other people. I mean, as they open up the restrictions, maybe it'll change. But, like, I thought that was an interesting criticism that, like, why are you putting that out? You, not that you have to have every song about the damn what's happening, but, like, you know, put out no. something more mellow or something. I don't know. Remember that'll open up the, uh, you know, not the genres exactly, but like the, the subject matter of like people just listen to other shit. Like, oh, let me listen to like some other music with more substance or at least a story behind it or more of a, I don't know, people might just uh, explore more because they don't, they don't have the environment to go nuts. They're going to knock into a lounge room into a club with kids 
yeah. sitting around or whatever. There's also that. Sometimes it might, but sometimes it's not. Yeah. You're like, yeah, people might explore a little more and then get a little, little uh, into some new stuff. Yeah, know. that's a good point. I like that. So